might be 16. Which you talking about uranium or thorium? The yeah. uranium in uh, Andhra. Uh, Andhra. Uh, there would be but uh, uh, is there in Meghalaya as well. No, it is there, but, but uh, Meghalaya will not touch that much. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, there are a lot of tribal cities. Any, any nuclear activity gets uh, thousands of people really agitated without knowing. Yeah. And this is where the regulation part comes. That's right. Uh, which I <laughs> forgot to do. But the issue is, in India, when somebody complains about nuclear, uh, I have to keep quiet and listen. And unless I really stupid, of course. Uh, <laughs> because they have a very good point. They say, okay, hey, all that is correct. Let us say nuclear power is safe. Let us say it's cheaper. Let us say it's more efficient. All that I'll accept, tell me, is it run safely? And I can't say yes, not in India. Uh, the CAG had a report, TAG had a report on this. They said they're, they're failing. You don't even know all the nuclear sources in your country, let alone monitoring it. And stuff. We have no, the highest, the fine according to the act is not compared to this fine. It would be fine, would be fine for a uh, violation. So basically, if you know, you take your girlfriend over to, your, to the nuclear plant, plant and they stop you and say, what are you doing? Why do you find it for it? It's about the price of the Tajma to do, I think, for an <laughs> So, I mean... Is it, and is it true that shipping just one shipload of uranium from Australia is equivalent to ten shiploads of coal? One shipload from what? Australia, uranium. Uranium? Yeah. I don't know. No, so what about the regulatory part? The regulatory you were saying that if the villagers uh, make some complaints, then much of the complaints are right. So what is so the complaints, the, the, the villagers are right in the sense that, it, 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 see, there's a lot of politicians, I think, uh, everybody who is opposing it is not doing it from come look and I'll show you what I'm going to show you and go. Yeah, but the nuclear safety record is fairly okay, right, compared it to is the fairly okay, but it's not being used for safety. It's a case for updating the regulatory record is unsafe, but today it is unsafe. Yes, absolutely. regulatory, yes, of course, eventually it will make it unsafe, but essentially it's a case for regulatory amendment rather than... Absolutely. I think uh, because there was, see, you know, I, I won't be so safe. I the argument I, uh, I make in, again on an article in Sierra is that uh, we always confuse the Indian confuse uh, secrecy for security. If you're secret, you're safe. No, that is not true. In fact, it might be it more dangerous. You need to let other people see. Because you don't have all, you can't have all the experts in the world. Some expert might say, you know, that's very unsafe. You need, and when it comes to things like nuclear, it is serious enough. That's still be broken though. So we don't have an issue, but that's like basically if you don't know how to drive a car and I put you in a car and you drive, you don't get on an accident fine, but that doesn't mean you won't get on an accident when you don't know how to drive. Uh, Jaydeep, yeah. did uh, Homi Baba talk anything about uh, security of how how to do this and how to handle security of uh, nuclear plants? I don't know. Homi Baba has got to be in the focus of my research. When, when you talk to K. Subramanian, did you ask him in particular or anyone else in a security establishment or so-called strategic experts and all? If there are people who are out and out for closing the, uh, the nuclear option, for closing the nuclear option, I will ignore that. On the favor of, of having the armaments rather than, you know, I do I, not just give up. Even if you keep the option, you don't have it today. <laughs> that's, that's the whole point. Yeah. What, what do you mean by having an option when the other guy, your neighbors, already got a gun? Yeah. See, what is it by having an option? And the issue with Indian defense planning, uh, strategic planning, is that the military is not taken into the inner circle as much. <coughs> they don't get to, put, to give their inputs that much. Uh, so, a lot of this is done by the civilians, I people, politicians, and that. Who oh, basically they don't know. Don't know much, exactly. Yeah, but I think, to be fair, the nuclear establishment, right, has been like, fairly uh, expertise based like I mean, you don't have too much of uh, I mean like at least the way I have understood that they have a direct uh, re relationship with the PMO, PMO operates and then like you have actually people from the uh, SMEs as we call it right the subject matter from the nuclear field who have been typically advising the government and all that so it's not like a, any other program where you have the so you, you know the SME you, you need not for nuclear technology Nuclear technology is one thing. Having a reactor and having the bomb also is one thing. But for having a nuclear policy of war and deterrence, the SME you need is a guy who talks war. Okay. You don't need a SME who knows physics. That is a different thing. And that is the problem that that uh, which is actually the subject of a book, which basically one there is an academic who has argued that uh, Indian nuclear policy is dis uh, is so decided by B A R C rather than by the government and all that stuff. Doctrine. Because you know. 
Rather I don't know what's going on, Omega of all senses, this is what we need to do. Who's going to question them? They're experts, okay, okay, okay. If you think that's basically, you know, a lot of, like, I mean, look at the Prime Minister that we've had also. Some expert walks in with, like, you know, three PhDs in nuclear physics and chemistry and something else, and tells them this is what we need to do. I don't think they've got to say, no, I disagree with you. They have no clue as to what's going on. No, I think uh, that's when uh, uh, Prime went to US in 2005, mm -hmm. and uh, as he claims that he was given that one, two, three agreement, uh, in principle agreement, like on the last minute. Mm -hmm. I don't think even Mr. Kapoorkar was with him, isn't it? I don't know. That I don't know. That's why exactly what I did. Because even, uh, that's exactly his mm -hmm. claim. I wasn't there, I wasn't present. But in 2005, the agreement was not signed. Not signed, but an in principle, the, the in principle, in principle agreement, agreement was given, and the mention was just in four paragraphs. Daring to summarize it all. Can you just lay down some, let's say, four or five real pointers for nuclear policy for the future? Let me, it could be for energy, it could be for weapons, you can say for both, but what is the comprehensive takeaway from what we are talking here? Or what is it that should be the policy? Well, see, the thing is... Uh, yeah, that, that's a given. Next. Okay. The thing is, we have to be very clear as to uh, where we want to go, first of all. I don't think anybody has an idea, we're fumbling in the dark, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, what we have to have very clearly is, are we going in for nuclear, yes or no? And if we are... Uh, let's assume we are. Okay, then next. Then we have to, the next thing we have to do is, we have to engage those people. Uh, we have to have a massive propaganda machine. I think uh, the NPCI launched a comic book about atomic safety. Uh, and was, it was distributed to them. But see, the, ultimately the fact is, you know, Indian literacy, Indian, um, you know, X, Y, Z, all these factors given, peculiar indigenous factors given. Uh, we have to, you know, we can't be urban elites and just ignore the villages. We have to address their concerns, not explain to them why. And they will have questions, sir, but, you know, this fish is dying and, or, you know, and they'll have all these fish dying. Just build a reactor in Delhi and Bangalore. Huh? Just build a reactor in Delhi and Bangalore. <laughs> See, no reactor <laughs> is there. No, way. but it can definitely be built close by. Yeah, but the New York reactor is only like 25 miles away. Right, exactly. It can be close. Kalpa comes very close to right. Exactly. It's about 20 kilometers. Right. <laughs> so my point is, first of all, you are radiated. Yeah, I'm going to tell you. Spread the message that it's okay. It's okay. Uh, through comic books, through you know whatever a sustained uh, public relations campaign or whatever you want to call it. And this is not about a year or two or two. This is at least a 20, 30 year project because that is the number of people we have to participate on this. We have to say very clearly, like anything else, like fire, like guns, like airplane travel, this is dangerous, but like, and that is why we have strict regulations to control it. The first thing we have, one thing we have, one thing, not the first thing, but one thing we have to do is do that, uh, get people on board, so we, if we can share a common vision, then fight each other. The second thing we have to do is fix the regulatory system. We need good regulation. Now we have the IEA coming in because of those, you know, uh, agreements we have signed. We have to use that expertise. You don't have enough expertise, fine. At least the civilian sector use that expertise and maybe you can take some of that and apply it, you know, clandestinely or whatever doesn't matter to your, uh, as far as safety is concerned, I think you could mind also. We have military reactors, but the point is the regulatory system has to be good, you need experts, and get that expertise. Only then can people have the confidence to say, let's make more nuclear power plants. Otherwise, no matter how educated you are, you'll always stumble like I do, saying, yes, we need nuclear power, but. That but has to go. The only way you can go is by nuclear power. Uh, in terms of energy, that is what it means. So the military, I think, again, the same thing. The, Everybody says, you know, the military, the budget is limitless, all this. I don't think it's entirely true. In the sense, for the sort of modeling we need, uh, so, you know, we, India doesn't have, like, many supercomputers. All these issues are there. They have to be worked out. We need to militarize those war edge. If your nuclear strategy is to fight a tactical nuclear war, <coughs> you know, God hope it never happens. But if that is your strategy, you prepare for it. You create a tactical nuclear war. A tactical nuclear war is small. You have to miniature them as much as possible. And for that, you need, since you're not going to test any more, uh, at least, no, not, and hopefully if you do, you don't get caught with it. Uh, you have to have computer simulations, uh, and that requires powerful computers. If you decide, okay, fine, I'm okay with city busters for getting stacked with the water, we'll just 
take out five of the enemy cities and tell them they are sorry, we are not good enough to make tactical war. It's fine. But if that is the case, do that. Yeah. There is no clarity in human defense. And clarity, again, it is not, uh, you know, the argument is always, well, we have clarity, but we don't have to share it. You do have to share it. That's Dr. Strangelove has a wonderful line in that thing, you know. Of course, the whole point of this device he talks about, Doomsday device, right, is to tell the whole world. This device basically, if you launch, it will automatically launch all of the warrant against you. Okay? But they didn't tell anybody that they had this device. What's the point? So then what happens? Some guy thinks, okay, one bomb I can drop and get away with it. No, it doesn't. So the idea is not to keep it secret. To tell people very clearly, look, we have somewhere between 300 and 350 warheads, and yes, uh, 80 of them are aimed at Pakistan, and others are aimed at you know, somebody else we will not talk about. Um, <laughs> and this is if this, this is our retina. You know, you have a skirmish in a village, 10 soldiers, fine. You know, you start putting a thousand soldiers on the border, yeah, I'm going to react heavily with their forces, so I said. And if you put 10,000 soldiers, you know, I might start, you know, dusting those nuclear uh, missiles. So you be very, so you know. What level? No, Indians don't know, and India's enemies don't know up to what level they can be pushed. Right now, they, feel they can be pushed anywhere, which is not, you know, should not be the case. Okay, um, <coughs> I have uh, just three questions. The first one is I've been listening to a lot of these Hindu uh, spiritual leaders and uh, Hindu Vedic experts, if I call them. So they have been uh, mentioning that there, there are a lot of uh, these mentions of atomicity and atomic uh, details. Mm -hmm. you know. So has India I mean, formally researched on any of these. Like there are a lot of uh, uh, mentions of um, uh, core <coughs> weaponry, how we can acquire weapons, and all these mantras. And even I'm, I've just listened to them. So, has India formally taken up these? Uh, yeah, research? Actually, this sort of stuff is not, there's not much research in India. Uh, I'm very skeptical of these things personally, but the point is uh, in, if you want conclusive empirical proof in a scientific method, the fact is the research has not been done on this. I mean, there are some people who claim this, but we're not sure how far this can go. <coughs> what is available, most people will not know. Those five people who say that, are you going to know? That has to be brought to us for scrutiny. And it's not just about nuclear stuff. This is true about our culture in general. I think we are lacking that uh, there's no, not to research. There's a lot of, uh, there, there'll be few people talking, but there's not getting out to most people. So it feels like mumbo jumbo. feels like panic kya bol right now. Right, so it's more of claims than... Uh, exactly. Jerry, uh, so, so the points that you are you are trying to note down, right? Like, like the question that uh, Suhas asked. So, what is the greatest challenge that uh, Indians would face when they get ready for uh, nuclear energy in uh, doing this activity? Okay, is it the people or the NGOs or you know, bureaucracy? Or who is it? Yeah. Before you answer that, just in the interest of time, this is the last question that Jerry uh, will respond to, and uh, then we close the session. Yes. One more yes. Yes. Just yes. one more question, please. Just one more question. Like uh, USB, USB, or <coughs> developed countries, they have been uh, talking about these terrorists having this nuclear. Now, you explained how complicated a nuclear thing. So, do you really, uh, or do we have to really feel that terrorists may get this technology and they can use it? Or, because you yourself have said it's so complex and maintaining it. And I think, right. I'll answer your question first. I'll answer it. The idea of a terrorist making a bomb is absolute nonsense. The infrastructure required it is absolute nonsense. If it is a terrorist, it has to be a state-sponsored terrorist. It will, it will have a blueprint, there will be satellites. It is, you know, yes, you can hide, but even Iran with those underground facilities, you still track them. It will have to be a phenomenon. At that point, it is not a terrorist uh, organization. It is a terrorist state. It is a terrorist state that is hiding. So that you know, changes the scope of the debate. It's not a terrorist state. You know, it's it's a strategic nuclear involving state. Why is it a terrorist state? No, no, no. He's saying if, if a terrorist group does it, uh, the, for the terrorist group to make nuclear weapons, they require the level of the, the, the indulgence of the state uh, in which they are doing it to the extent where the state itself is doing it. <coughs> exactly. Uh, the, the, the real issue is uh, what if terrorists acquire nuclear weapons, steal nuclear weapons, buy nuclear weapons? The real danger for that, I think the CIA says this very clearly, and I think this is where uh, the American political system and uh, the international media, not just the US media, is lying to the international public. The real danger is Pakistan and not Iran. 
CIA has said this. Uh, it is not that we want Iran to have a bomb. It is not that Iran is, uh, you know, a very friendly country uh, that you know doesn't matter if they have a bomb or not. But the greatest danger is in Pakistan. And the fact, in my opinion, I think is that uh, Americans don't know what to do with Pakistan. I don't think anybody really knows what to do with Pakistan. The Indians, the Chinese, the Russians. And that is the, where the danger is. Um, the Iran question is different. I think uh, <coughs> the, one of the problems with Iran is that uh, the history of antagonization the West has uh, towards Iran uh, is also the unfairness of the NPT, the atomic apartheid, as uh, some Indian uh, bureaucrats said in Vienna. So there are deeper issues. With your question, not answered. With your question, I think the single greatest challenge is what you know. I think we can go back to Machiavelli on this. When you try to change the status quo, you will have resistance. The first it doesn't matter what it is. If you change it, there will be opposition. A uh, person who is very, uh, I was told not to quote, but uh, I tell you what the message was: is India is ultimately run by the IAS. Most of <laughs> what happens is based on. Uh, Basically, what they want and not what they want, but what they are willing to do and not willing to do to a large extent. Mm -hmm. uh, so, even if a politician has good intentions, he has to convince the bureaucracy mm -hmm. to support. Uh, so, in that sense, I think the real added uh, problem mm -hmm. is the ossified system that India has. In any department, you go. It's not about defense. It's not about nuclear. In any department, you go. Uh, I don't think that ideas of free market, for example, are unheard of in India's finance ministry. I am sure they have heard of uh, Milton Friedman. But if you, there is no way you can expect the, a country to change, especially a country with, with vested interests, with the fiefdoms, to change, not just overnight, it will take a few years. And Narendra Modi says this in his interview recently that uh, what he has done until now is he's filled the potholes Congress has created, now we have to build. Now we have a whole country to build. It will take a few, you know, if tomorrow when the day comes, don't expect progress for at least 10, 15 years. Expect only repairs for the next 10, 15 years. Only after that, you can ask for advancement, like in any other sense. If the government has the vision, then we So on that uh, good note, <laughs> 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 Mr. Urgent India, uh, Jadid, thanks so much for Thank a very you. insightful talk and uh, for a very active participation in the audience here. I think we're going to take honor for another couple of hours, but clearly, uh, all good things have to come to an end, and so has. We don't mind. We can sit here. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much, and uh, we look forward to more such sessions in uh, the coming months. And I'm sure uh, the discussions from these sessions will go a long way in building the kind of narrative that we want to see in this country. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.